Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Science. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as well as the bell icon so you receive notifications for future videos. We're back after a short break, and this time our units are going to be delving into molecular biology more and more, now that we've covered a lot of the cellular processes that happen in our bodies. Today, we're going to be focusing on mitosis, or the way most of our cells divide. Let's get started. First, we have our question of the day. What is one difference between mitosis and meiosis? Leave your answers in the comment section below. So, mitosis is a process of cell division within our somatic cells. Somatic cells are essentially all the cells in our body that are not our gamete cells. Gametes divide by another process, and gametes refer to the cells that deal with sexual reproduction. We will talk more about gamete cell division in future videos. There are four mitotic phases that we will describe to fully understand the mitosis process. You may recall from the last video that cells spend a lot of their lifetime in interphase, where it grows and carries out its cellular processes. After interphase, the cells go through the M phase, where the M stands for mitosis. After interphase, the cell will start mitosis, which is broken up into four main phases. The first phase is prophase. It is easy to remember that prophase is the first phase because of the prefix pro, which means before. In prophase, the nuclear envelope, or membrane, of the cell's nucleus begins to dissolve, and the DNA chromatin begins to condense. At first, this chromatin is tangled up inside of the nucleus, but when it condenses, it begins to form neat chromosomes, which are two chromatids stuck together in an X-like shape. The cell also begins to start building mitotic spindles, which will be used to maneuver the chromosomes around the cell in later mitotic stages. After prophase, we enter metaphase, the second major phase of mitosis. In metaphase, we have the chromosomes created in prophase lining up vertically in the middle of the cell, with mitotic spindles attaching to each chromatid. Mitotic spindles from one side of the cell will attach to one sister chromatid, and mitotic spindles from the other side of the cell will attach to the other sister chromatid on those chromosomes. This then sets us up for the third major phase of mitosis, anaphase. In anaphase, the mitotic spindles that are attached to each sister chromatid pull the sister chromatids away from each other until they are on opposite sides of the cells. This means that half of the pre-existing chromosome is now on one side of the cell and the other half on the other side. During anaphase, we also have some spindle fibers in the cell beginning to elongate the cell so that it appears more oval in shape. This is to prepare us for the last major stage of mitosis, called telophase. In telophase, we have a nuclear envelope or membrane beginning to form around the chromatids on each side. These chromatids are now referred to as chromosomes. These chromosomes also begin to decondense so that they can end up tangled like they were in the beginning of the mitosis cycle. The mitotic spindles also begin to break down, while spindle fibers still elongate the cell. After telophase, we finally reach cytokinesis, which is where the cell begins to divide into two cells. It cleaves the cell in half, so that now each newly formed cell has the same amount of chromosomes and new DNA to work with, and go through the cell cycle again. In plant cells, a cell plate works to separate the cells so that each cell has its own cell wall, formed from the cell plate after the division. Hope you enjoyed watching and stay tuned for our upcoming videos on meiosis. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and leave any questions in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Think science.